Hello there, George Carlin here. Look, I know what you're thinking. Didn't that old fuck die in 2008? Well, I sure the fuck did. But that was in the past. Don't get caught up in the past. I mean, think about this. Here I am speaking to you from the afterlife. What a strange world you crazy people have created. Well, anyways, I hope this entertains you. It's all I ever wanted to do. Enjoy social media. It's like the wild west of the internet. Anything goes. And I mean anything. You got people filming themselves doing the dumbest things you can imagine. And suddenly they're internet celebrities. I mean, what the hell is that all about? And don't even get me started on the comment section. It's like a sewer full of trolls and haters. The anonymity of the internet has brought out the worst in people. And what the fuck is wrong with these idiots on TikTok? If you've never used TikTok, it's like YouTube, but for crackheads. But YouTube does have a lot of legitimate content creators. The folks who use YouTube to share their talent and their passion with the world, it's a beautiful thing. But let's be real, folks. The vast majority of what you see on social media is just noise. It's like a giant room full of people all talking at once and you can't hear a damn thing. So folks, the next time you're tempted to waste hours of your life watching videos on YouTube, just remember most are just a bunch of nonsense, but there are some diamonds in the rough. You just have to dig a little deeper. All right, folks, you know what's been bothering me lately? Taxes. Taxes are what's been bothering me, you see. There's a saying that's been going around lately, and it's this, the taxes are theft. Now, I know that might sound a little extreme to some of you, but hear me out. Taxes in a way, or a form of taking money from one person and giving it to another. Now, I know that taxes are necessary to fund the government and all its programs, but that doesn't change the fact that it's still a form of taking someone else's money. And that's what gets me, folks. The government takes our hard yarn money, and they use it to fund things that we may or may not agree with, and that, to me, is a form of theft. Now, I'm not saying that taxes should be abolished, or that the government shouldn't have the power to take our money. I'm just saying that we need to have a serious conversation about taxes, and about the the role that they play in our lives. You know, people talk about it, I like it's some kind of big deal. They say it's gonna change the world, make everything easier, and maybe even take over our jobs. But let me tell you something, folks. AI is nothing but a bunch of ones and zeros. People think AI is all sophisticated and intelligent, but it's not. And don't even get me started on those AI powered robots. They can barely walk in a straight line. I've seen better balance on a drunk eye at last call. But the real kicker is these AI systems need humans to train them. Humans, the same species that thinks pineapple on pizza is a good idea. So don't worry. Hey, hi. may be advancing, but it's still got a long way to go before it can match the sheer brilliance of human idiocy. That's something to feel good about. I've been listening to Joe Rogan's podcast quite a bit lately. Now, I'm not saying I agree with everything Joe says. Hell, I don't agree with most of it. But I will say this. A man knows how to carry on a conversation. He brings on guests from all walks of life and he lets them talk. No holds back. Bard, and that's a rare thing in today's world where everything is so politically correct but the real beauty of a show is Joe himself he's a man with a curious mind and a sharp wit and he's not afraid to say what's on his mind no matter how unpopular it may be so folks if you're looking for a podcast that would challenge your beliefs and make you think give the Joe Rogan experience a listen just be prepared to be entertained irritated and maybe even enlightened all in the same hour Joe give me a call I'd love to be a guest sometime maybe I could tell all the listeners what it is like like beyond the pearly gates. Well, folks, it seems that the end is finally in sight. The COVID pandemic has been a long and difficult road for all of us, but it looks like we're finally turning the corner. And let me tell you, I'm happy about it. I'm happy that we're getting back to some semblance of normalcy. I'm happy that people are finally starting to feel safe again. You see, the COVID pandemic has been a time of great uncertainty and fear, and it's been a challenge for all of us. But despite all the difficulties, I think it's also been a time of great learning and growth. We've learned to be more grateful for the things that we have. And we've learned to be more compassionate towards others. We've learned that even in the darkest of times, we can still find a way to come together and support one another. I'm happy that we made it through to the other side. Well, not we. Viruses don't affect angels, thank God. You know, Mike Judge, a guy who created King of the Hill and Beavis and Butthead, well, my favorite thing he did was a movie. It's called Idiocracy. It's a comedy that takes a look at what might happen if society continues to become increasingly dumbed down. Now, some folks might find the movie a bit too cynical or negative, but I think it's a necessary wake-up call. It's a reminder that we need to pay attention to what's going on in the world, and that we need to fight against the forces that are trying to keep us stupid. It's a great movie that's not afraid to challenge the status quo, and that's sure to make you think. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. You know, words, they're funny things. They're supposed to communicate ideas and thoughts, but sometimes they just don't make any sense. Take the word gleam. What the hell is a gleam? Nobody knows, but it's a 
word? And don't even get me started on flipper to give it. What kind of a word is that? It's like somebody just started mashing their keyboard and that's what came out. And have you ever heard the word loquacious? Sounds like somebody sneezed and somebody else tried to spell it. But my personal favorite are those made up scientific words like one mechanics. That's a real mouthful and holographic principle. Sounds like something you heard a laser light show in the 80s. Hey Kevin, it's George Carlin here. I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for casting me in Dogma. It was an honor to be a part of such a unique and thought provoking film. You know, I've been making folks laugh for decades, but Dogma gave me the opportunity to stretch my acting muscles and tackle a completely different kind of role. And I have to say, it was a lot of fun. So thank you, Kevin, for giving me the chance to be a part of something truly special. I'll always look back on Dogma as one of the highlights of my career. Keep up the good work, my friend. You're a true visionary, and the world of film is a better place because of you. The future, it's a funny thing. We spend so much time thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next year, but the truth is, we don't know squat about the future. People talk about the future like it's a guarantee, like they have some sort of crystal ball that tells them exactly what's going to happen. But the future is just a big old question mark. It's like trying to catch a shadow. And all these technological advancements, they're supposed to make our lives easier. But what they really do is just make us more dependent on machines. Soon we won't even be able to tie our own shoes without consulting a computer. And don't even get me started on all the doomsday scenarios, the end of the world, the collapse of civilization, the rise of the machines. It's all just a bunch of hogwash. We've been hearing the same predictions for centuries, and yet here we are still kicking. So, folks, the next time you start worrying about the future, just remember it's all a big mystery. And the best we can do is enjoy the present and hope for the best. Hey, Tony, it's George Carlin here. I've been a fan of your work for a while, and I'd love to come on your Kill Tony show and give it a go. I know it's a pretty intense environment, but I think I can hold my own. I've been making folks laugh for decades, and I've got a few things to say about the state of the world today. I'm sure the audience would love to hear what I have to say, and I'd love to get a chance to test my material in front of a live crowd. So long as no one dies laughing, don't want anyone stealing my spot up there, you know? Maybe somewhere between Hans Kim and David Lucas. So what do you say? An old-timer like me a shot on Kill Tony. I promise it'll be a night to remember.